Hello everyone, Linda Israel here, and today I want to share with you the Wild and Free Bohemian Style Midori Journal cover that is a kit that you can get in my shop, or you can just use this as an idea on how to make your own Midori Style cover. In the kit, you get a 10 by 15 printed fabric. This is 100% cotton and it is treated so that it is washable. You get four sheets of eight and a half by 11 chipboard. I think these are like, I don't know, not quite one millimeter. That's why I put four and it also makes it easier for most home users to cut this with their paper cutter. And then you get about a yard of elastic cord. So let me show you how to put this together. So what I do is I take this chipboard and I cut it into six by nine. So I'll cut usually the nine inch and then I'll cut six inch and then I have this piece left over and that piece I will either trim depending on how wide I want my journal cover. The max will be two inches for this cover. You can go maybe two and a quarter and you'll be getting really close to the edges when you go to fold the inside in. And this is two by nine this time. Normally I do one and a half. I wanted to do a little bit thicker this time. And then I take those pieces, four of the six by nines, two of the two by nines, and I glue them together back to back. So you can kind of see there's a little bit of a shadow there that shows that there's two pieces glued together. And then because I am using chipboard and this is a light color fabric, you can kind of see possibly my cutting mat behind there. So I'll just take a piece of white fabric. This could be an old bed sheet. It could just be some cotton fabric that you have in your stash. And I'm just kind of lining it up with the other. And I found that this works the best for me. So what I'm going to do is just put a bead of glue down the edge all the way around and that'll help glue these together making them basically one piece so i know where my edges are pretty much so i'm going to grab my chipboard pieces here and i don't want to go too far beyond where my edge is i'll kind of fold it up so i can see it and I want to come down far enough. There, this is tall enough that when you go to fold this over, you're going to get full coverage on your chipboard. So I'll put this in the middle. And then I'm going to go over here and make sure that I'm pretty much staying in the middle here. All right. So it looks like I'm pretty straight. And so what I like to do is I will glue down the center piece first. And of course I'm gluing the number to the inside, not to the out, so it doesn't show through the white fabric. And I'm gonna put a generous amount of glue on the chipboard piece. So I'm gonna go all the way around the perimeter and zigzag down the middle. And then we're gonna position this in the center. You know, making sure that I'm top to bottom straight. And then I'm going to lay down the side pieces, but I don't want them right up against it. I want them a gap about, oh, an eighth of an inch. Again, we'll do the generous amount of glue and glue that to the fabric. Now I am putting a lot of glue as far as all over the surface, but it's not very thick. It's not a huge bead of glue because you don't want it to go all the way through your fabric. So again, I'm going to put this down just about an eighth of an inch. Basically the idea is that when you bend this up, these don't bunch up together. If they hit, then that is too close. So I'm just checking my work as I go. And I'll do this side. At this time, if you want, you can trim down the fabric so that it's about an inch, maybe a half an inch on the all sides. You know, I just leave mine. So I'm just going to take some glue now into the corner. 
and fold this in on all four corners. I am gonna go ahead, normally I don't, but I'm going to cut off some of this excess. I don't need that much. All right, so now I'm gonna fold these edges in and glue those down. I will be going to the sewing machine in a little bit to sew all my pieces together. If you don't have a sewing machine, just make sure that you put a generous amount of glue on this and that it is all nice and smooth. So there is so far the outside of the cover. And now I'm gonna work on getting the inside ready and then we're gonna to go to the sewing machine. So for the inside, I printed from the, I think this was the large journal kit. I printed one of the pages on linen cardstock and I did it on eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper and I need to cut it to fit in here. So I'm gonna get my paper cutter out. And I wanna cut this at five and three quarters of an inch since I'm six inches, so I'll have a little bit of a wiggle room on either side. And then I wanna cut this at eight and three quarters of an inch. And then I have this long strip left over that is two and a two point, point seven five or two and three quarters. So I'm just gonna cut this down to be eight and three quarters inches long. So yes, I do have a few leftover bits. I'll save those for something else. You can also use those for pockets. So this piece is going to go in the center. So it covers my gap here. This piece will go over here. And then this piece will go over here. So the next thing that I want to do is I'm going to go around the edges of these pieces and then I'll go over to the sewing machine and we'll do some stitching. And I meant to say we're going around the edges, the top and the bottom of this piece with distress ink. I just feel it helps finish it off just a little bit and kind of see the difference already when you lay it in there. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is go over to the sewing machine and I wanna stitch all the way around this piece and this piece, the left and the right, and then the top and the bottom of this piece. Then I will sew around the outside edge from the front of my cover. So I'm over at my sewing machine and I have it set up as an electronic machine in a zigzag stitch that the stitch width is 2.5 by 2.5. You know, what I suggest is that you take an index card and stitch on it and then write down what the settings were on your machine so that you can duplicate it quicker than trial and error trying to figure out which works the best. I have regular thread and regular needle. Needle. I do recommend that you use new thread, not thread that grandma had that she get passed down to you because more than likely it will break. So if you want smooth sewing, use a newer thread. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stitch across the, I'm trying to get in the camera, stitch across the top and the bottom of this piece. And now I'm gonna stitch all the way around the edge. Of, when I get to the edge and I need to turn a corner, I'll leave my needle down, raise my presser foot, swing my paper around, put down my presser foot again, and then continue sewing. My cover's been sitting here for a while, but I wanna make sure that before I sew that the glue is dry. I generally try not to put glue all the way up to the edge. I try to put it just a little bit in so that my needle doesn't get gummed up when I start sewing. 
this time, if there are some areas that you would like to add additional stitching, this is faux stitching that was already on there. I want to add just a little bit more. So I'm just going to position it in my sewing machine and stitch a few places. Well, there is the outside of the cover stitch. So here's a couple places where I added some new stitches on top. This was the stitches that are part of the print in here. And then of course I stitched all the way around that outside edge. So now I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to place down my center piece in the middle here. So I'll put a generous amount of glue on the whole piece. And I'll come in here and put a little glue on the actual chipboard and fabric on the inside just a little bit. I can't find my bone folder, so I'm using an acrylic block to smooth my cardstock onto the cover. You really want this piece smoothed in here and after it's dried a little bit, what I really need to do is make sure that the paper has a little bit of a crease where it's going to bend, but I don't want to bend my cover too soon because that makes the paper move. So I'm just slightly using the edge of my block to go down the crevice where the cover's going to fold. All right, so now I'm going to place the side panels using the same method of adding a lot of glue to all the pieces. All right, so once it's dried a little bit, you can start working the cover. So I'm just trying to help it along, bending it, making sure that that paper isn't buckling up. And that's looking pretty good. So there's where it's looking like so far. Now, I made my spine about two inches wide. I need to find my template. Maybe I'll make a new one real quick. So I'm just making a quick little template here. So I'm just going to lay it on my table just so I can look at it. And what I want to do is put a hole right in the center, about a quarter of an inch in from the edge. And then on either side, so I'm just kind of looking at this, I want to go about a half an inch. And then I want to repeat that on the other side. So I've got my crocodile, and this is the three sixteenths quarter of inch, three sixteenths of an inch hole punch. So I'm just going to come in here and punch holes. All right, so this is my guide that I'm going to use for punching holes in my cover. So I want to make sure that I've got this all the way where I want it, and I'll use my pen and mark a dot and then I've got a measuring on the side here that I can use so I'm going to line it up and change my guide so that I have it the right depth so that when I go to punch they're always the same size or same distance in so that way they're straight across there, pretty close. Now you can go ahead and put eyelets in. I don't, I never had really had the problem with uh, issues with feeding my elastic through or it pulling. But if you like that look, put them on. I'm not gonna do that. So I'm gonna take my elastic piece. I'm gonna start, whether it be the top or the bottom, I'm gonna start at the top and go in the first hole and then come into the second hole to the side. So we're gonna basically end up with what kind of looks like a stitch here. Then I'm gonna come back down to the bottom center hole and pull that through and then come from the outside on that far left hole come up to the top far left hole 
and then I'm going to go back through the center hole. I'm going to take this piece that's over here and go to the bottom right hole to the outside and then back through the center hole. And then I adjust the elastic, so I'll just kind of play with it until I get how tight I want it to be. And then I will pull the elastic pieces up and then tie a quick knot. And if it's too long that it hangs out of your journal, well then trim it just a little bit. But I leave mine relatively long because elastic does, you know, stretch after a while and you may want to adjust it a little bit and it's easy to untie this knot. So with this style, you can now take a journal and this is a different one. I haven't finished the journal that goes inside here and you can pull up these cords, whatever one you want. So let's say we want to put it in the middle and we could put that right in the middle. It fits from top to bottom. And now you have a journal cover for your journal. Now, if you want a closure, you can do that as well. You can punch a hole, you could sew a piece, you can use a special chain and buckle closure, whatever it is that you so choose. Well, I hope you enjoyed seeing a quick tutorial on making a Midori style cover. You know, you can kind of play around with scraps of fabric or you can buy the printed kit if you so choose to make your own. Hey, give this video a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Check the description box for links to my kit that I have available. Know that I go live on Mondays at 3.45 p.m. Central Standard Time where I show making a journal and I hope you'll join us. All right, everybody, if you have any comments or questions, use that comment box down below. Have a fabulous day. Bye, everybody.